Good morning. We are going to be talking about an autistic trait that I would say all of us share. Okay, we're just going to get right into this one. What am I talking about? I'm talking about flat effect. It goes all the way back to childhood. So when we're very little, we are our natural selves. We don't know that we need to mask or, or, or be anything other than what we are. And the older we get, we recognize other people act differently than we do. And we want to fit in. So we try to hide that flat effect that comes so natural to us. And even as an adult, even more for me. Now that I'm aware of it, I'm trying not to so much. But when I come home from work and my husband and son are constantly asking me, What? Why are you mad? What's wrong with you? Why are you mad? Hmm? It's a bit discouraging. They even know of my diagnosis, yet they still want to know, why are you mad? And I have to explain almost on a nightly basis, I'm not mad. That's just the way my face looks. You pretty much should get used to it. Because if I can't rest at home and be myself, where can I be myself? It's just hard. Society just wants everyone to just put on a smile and we're supposed to show emotion in our face. But when you have a flat affect naturally, as I would say most people with autism do, it doesn't come naturally. So you, you learn to put on this mask for people to get by. So let's talk about what is a flat affect. So it's something common with people with autism as well as some other conditions. It says people with ASD may interact, behave, and communicate in different ways. They may experience flat affect. If you have autism and flat affect, your face often may appear blank or like you have a resting B face, if you know that expression. Your voice may not change tone or you may sound robot-like. So do you feel like to others you sound like a robot you sound like you are a robot and that's how you feel like you look like a robot so some other conditions that you can have that can cause the flat affect could be like schizophrenia depression parkinson's disease post-traumatic stress disorder so you need to know just because you have a flat affect does not mean you're autistic there is more that goes into the equation of being diagnosed with autism than just a flat affect. You go down there and like and subscribe to my channel. Um, I make videos about adults with autism and I put out weekly videos. I'd love to have you on my channel. The funny thing is when I was a teenager, I used to be in pageants. I don't know why I was interested in being in pageants when I look back at it now. I really think it was just about playing a character, you know, getting to be somebody else, as I always enjoyed, you know, even Halloween and wearing costumes. But being in pageants, when I look back at the video footage, like, I th really thought I was putting on a huge smile. They told you, they tell you, smile, smile more, you need to smile. And when I was walking across the stage, I thought I was smiling. But when I look at, back at the video, it was really more of a grin. I was doing the best I could but it wasn't enough to win a pageant. I tell you, if you really want to be on stage, be a model, because in modeling, you don't have to smile. In fact, you should have that flat affect on your face the whole time you walk. I was in the modeling club in high school, and you can imagine I was pretty good at it because I could walk down the runway with no smile. So when I was researching on flat affect, um, I found this right here, I'm gonna share it with you. I kinda liked what it said, it says, Strategies for addressing flat affect include education, awareness, encouraging expression, and social skills training. Now, let me say, when I say encouraging expression, I don't mean making someone smile. Um, it means encouraging them to express themselves in alternative ways, such as through art, writing, or using emojis, which I think a lot of us on the spectrum enjoy emojis because we can express 
what we think other people want to see through emoji instead of wasting the energy using spoons up um, using our face in digital communication. It says social skill training can be beneficial for individuals with autism to learn and practice facial expressions, gestures, and voice modulation. Now, I don't know if they're saying there that we need to just conform to what everyone else does. I wouldn't agree with that if that's what they mean. But as a child, I definitely remember looking in the mirror at home and looking at facial expressions and practicing. If anything, I'm trying to mask less around people and be more of myself this year. That's what 2024 is going to be about for me, being more of myself. Now that pretty much almost everybody in my life knows I'm autistic, I want to be myself because otherwise what's the point in telling people if you can't be yourself? It's a work in progress, believe me. When I went in for my autism diagnosis, the first time I went to testing, I was masking and I came out of there without a autism diagnosis because I was not being myself and it bit me in the butt as they say. So the second time I went to my autism diagnosis with a different psychologist, I was not masking, I was being myself and it made her able to see behind the mask what she needed to know to give me a correct diagnosis. Do not go in for your diagnosis being anything other than your authentic self. So this is what she said specifically about flat effect from, from seeing me. She said, it was noted that Jennifer's speech during the assessment lacked intonation and her facial expressions appeared limited. Okay. Again, for the ADOS-2, which is the Autism Diagnosis Observation Schedule, she said, Jennifer's speech often lacked intonation. Intonation is the same thing as flat effect. It's a flat effect. She exhibited limited emotional expressiveness when responding to questions from the examiner. She rarely expressed interest in the examiner's thoughts, feelings, or experiences. Jennifer's descriptive and emotional gestures often appeared po poorly integrated with her speech. I sat there frozen. I, my gestures, I did not gesture because it's not something I naturally do. So when I was there in her office, I did not gesture. I did not mimic her like I usually do out in public. I just sat there frozen, which is normal for me and okay for me, and I'm okay. It's just lack of gestures. I pretty much just sat in her office like this. She did say, however, my reactions were often socially awkward or negative. Isn't that the story of my life? Social awkwardness. Check, 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 check. I know you understand. And I'm grateful for that. So I want to hear your comments on this one. I want to hear how you relate to this. I want to hear about what you think about flat effect and lack of gesturing. So comment down below because I love, love, love getting your comments. And I will respond to all of them. If you are thinking about a submission for our art collab coming up, um, I need to get those by Friday, so I would love to get those. I've already gotten a few, but I'd like to add a few more. So if you have an interest in art, you'd like to share that with our, our community, you can send me an image of your art, an audio file of you talking about it, or you can send me a video clip of you talking about it um, in less than three minutes or less if you can, and a JPEG image if you want to be in the thumbnail. But yeah, I hope to see more of you there. Send those to my email. I'll put that down in the description of this video also. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.